What's up, everyone? My name is Lauren Wilson. I ran Division One track and cross country at the University of Texas at Austin. I've run a 236 and a 237 for a marathon or right under six minute pace. I've run 50 miles at a sub seven minute per mile pace. I've run 100 kilometers or 62 miles at a seven minute. 15 second per mile pace. I coached for six years at St. Stephen's Episcopal School where we broke records, coached multiple state champions. I mentored the only national champion cross country team from Texas, Bernie Champion, my best friends, the kids two years below me, still the only high school in Texas history to win the national cross country championship out of Bernie, Texas, a town of about 10,000 people at the time. And this is my run vlog as I train for the 2025 Black Canyon 100 kilometer race here in Arizona. Just going to be giving weekly updates on my training, on my mindset. My goals are I hope that you can abstract some lessons and learn and apply it to your own running training, to your own running journey. And then by me talking out loud, it holds me accountable. It allows me to learn through sharing. And then it just gives my my running greater meaning and greater purpose. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in to what I did this past week. So this week I made a Excel sheet. And as you can see here, I'm going to try to zoom in for y'all if I can. I don't even know how to do that. Oh, right here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So as you can see what I did. So I also have my MBA, pass all four parts of the CPA exam, worked in public accounting. So in short, I'm just a nerd when it comes to Excel sheets and everything. But anyways, I love to log what I'm doing. And Strava is a really great tool because it automatically will log your information and you can go back and look at it. I created this so that I could have a little bit more detail, have some different data points that I wanted to have. And so you can see my A race is February 8th and I created some formulas. So today's Sunday, July 28th, 2024, 195 days till my event, about 27.86 weeks, about six and a half months. So we're not even in within six months out from the race, which I would consider a long build up. Uh, my second race I am going to do, it's not on here, doing the Flagstaff to Stagecoach 55 kilometer on September 21st, but that's just going to kind of be a training day, logistics day. I'm really excited to get ready for this High Rocks. That's going to be my second biggest event. Um, to be honest with you, this is hybrid hunting season. I think that the hybrid movement is a net positive. It's getting people excited. But just like anything, it's gone a little too far. People claiming to be elite pro athletes that really just don't have any business using using those words, in my opinion. But we're going to keep this positive, right? We're going to stay on the positivity. That's just the competitive side of me coming out. To be honest, I'm a little guy, five foot seven, 140 pounds, 145 pounds, full of carbohydrates, full of salt, full of water. So we'll see what I got when it comes to the high rocks and pushing those sleds around. But let's go ahead and dive into what I did this week. So Monday, right, I did seven miles, just kind of easy, 7 pace, one mile of my hill drill, so nothing's really changed. And then I did a mile at 6.22 pace. So if we come over to my Strava, see what that looks like here. I'm always starting off easing into the, into the workout Training plans, always dynamic, always flexible, always ready to change as we go. As you can see, pretty much the whole theme of this week, if I'm being honest, I was just really tired. Work, there's just a lot going on, right? There's a lot going on outside of training. This isn't happening in isolation. Everything's good. Everything's positive. But there's cumulative fatigue over the last two, three, four weeks of training plus work plus life. All that good stuff. But you can see started off pretty easy, ended with about 629 mile here, and then I did my mile of hill drills. Didn't really have any squeeze, didn't really have any push. So a mile at about 622 pace. So if I go back and take a look at that, 
maybe we can see the pace distribution on that 622 mile. And so what I'm doing here, right, with the hill drills is I'm just getting in about two to three months of side shuffles, cariocas, butt kicks, skips, high knees backwards, working on my overall athleticism in a dynamic way. A lot of times we we lift weights, which is really, really good. And there's a lot of benefits to that in terms of nervous system efficiency, recruiting more muscle fibers, laying down actual muscle fibers, getting stronger, becoming more resilient. But you also want to be able to move dynamically. Running is a dynamic sport where you're moving your center of mass forward through space. And so I like to do drills where I'm exaggerating it, picking up my knees, picking up my feet, kicking my butt back against my butt. That way I'm getting that full range of motion. I'm working the muscles. I'm working my body through that full range of motion so that I raise my, my absolute capacity. And so, but you don't want the muscle and the joint to be a long noodle, right? You don't want it to be flimsy like Gumby, like those things at the car dealership that are kind of just flying all over the air. That's not what we want. We want good length, but we also want that good tension. We want that muscle to be able to contract, right? So we want strength over length. And that's what the dynamic drill does is I'm not holding the muscle necessarily at its end range of motion but I'm working the muscle and the tendon and the joint through its full range of motion under load. And that's how you're going to gain that nice tension over that length. That's how you're going to gain that nice contractibility over that length. And so that's why I'm doing it. And the why I'm doing it on a hill is it adds more resistance. So it's a good way of getting more strength training type movements without necessarily raising the risk of adding a barbell onto my back or, or holding weight. So it's a lot safer way of getting that contractability. And Sebastian Coe did a lot of this kind of stuff. So Sebastian Coe, 141, one of the British great half milers, milers, et cetera. And a lot of, a lot of high, high end runners will have a hill phase in their training block. But anyways, going to this mile 622, like I said, felt kind of flat, like no squeeze or anything. And let's see here. Heart rate was kind of high, 151. Um, just hot in general. Nothing too much to, to look at there. But then after that, I had a big lunch. I had, let's see, I had egg, bacon, cheddar, biscuit from Whole Foods. Then I had a panini. And so that felt really good. And I actually felt better in the PM. So sometimes it's just like that. And one of the things is, as you get into training, you're going to have days where you do feel flat. And so it is, okay, is this a true flat recovery day where I need to adapt in terms of maybe I need to rest, foam roll, meditate, do an ice bath, do a sauna, go for a walk, do something else to actually recover? Or can I get some food in me? Can I maybe take a little nap, maybe do a breath work protocol, reset my HRV, reset my nervous system and feel better? And on this Monday, that was the case. I just needed a meal. I needed to get the day going, and I felt a lot better. And so what I ended up doing, uh, did my warm-up with some CrossFit fam, and then I did two rounds of ring-assisted single-leg squats, so just working on triple flexion, ankle, knee, hip, uh, with an 18-pound kettlebell in one hand, so suitcase carry, trying to maintain a nice neutral spine. That way you're working on your core stability muscles because your core so your abdominals and your back they work to stabilize they work for lateral flexion and they work for rotation so they work to stabilize everything and then they work to flex laterally and rotate to produce propulsion so just trying to work on that a little bit side lunge with a little overhead rotation so i like to do compound movements or full body movements where my upper body, my lower body both have to do something. So I would step out to the side, do my side lunge, open up my hips, open up my adductors, but then I would have a weight and go around my head like that, right? So I'm working my upper body, working my upper shoulders, getting that shoulder mobility, maintaining that upper body, lower body coordination really, really well. Um, Let's see here, split stance cable rotation. So I stand with my legs like about this 
and I'm going to try to get do a better job getting videos for y'all. And then I pull the cable machine like so, and I try to keep my hips square, and I'm just rotating my shoulders to make an X back and forth. So I'm getting that mid-back rotation coin. So when you're running, your shoulders are kind of making that X. I like to say you're doing a spiral X rotation. There's spirals going up and down the body, and then there's an X in the, in the shoulders and in the pelvis, and, and I really love that. But then there's also an X in terms of your lats and your and your glutes. Um, so that's going really well. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with my my light gear. It just keeps turning off. But whatever. I don't claim to be a technological expert. But uh, we're going to keep this party going. Uh, what else what did I do? Ski rig. So like I was saying, this is more of a high, rec, high rock specific. So ski rig, I was on a resistance 10. Did about a minute, 58 seconds, both rounds. 25 burpees, lunges with a 75-pound sandbag on my back, wall balls with 20 pounds. So again, trying to train for high rocks to keep things fresh. I believe that strength training as you get older not only is better for your health, it's always better for performance. So that's my kind of my thing with the whole hybrid. Again, net positive, but it's actually just part of having a good, high-quality, comprehensive training plan. There's nothing really – too hybrid about it so i feel like it's marketing but again net positive we're going to stay positive boom 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 we want to lay those good fruits baby we don't ever want to speak a negative we're all about that positive energy so that was monday right good mileage good good weight lifting tuesday uh trying to build up the base on the bike again because that's a really good way of not only building up your cardiovascular endurance you're getting circulation, which helps with recovery. And if you're not just pushing out those watts, it also, when you're running, you can have a lot of imbalances, but the bike is fixed, the rotations. So it can help your body also get back in balance as you cycle through even ranges of motions on both sides, where if you're running, you might favor your right side or your left side. It's not going to be as exaggerated when you're cycling. You might push more watts out on one side versus the other, but at least they're working the same range of motion. And so that's what I did there was just exploring paths, found really good safe paths here in the Phoenix area, um, Foothills Recreation Path to New River Trail, Skunk Creek, badass paths, free from traffic, felt safe, love that. Going to be spending a lot of time out there over the next few months. In jiu -jitsu, then I do jiu-jitsu three times this week, what we did in jiu-jitsu. And again, so why am I working on, why am I working on this? Um, I've been running since I was 12 years old. I'm 33 now, I'll be 34 on August 4th. Trying to keep things fresh, strength training, power, athleticism, all of that's super important for performance and for maintaining your youth and your vitality as you start to, to get older. And I just love the puzzle that is jiu-jitsu. And I love, the, again, the strength over the length, the athleticism, the agility. I feel that it translates well over to my running. You got to think about it. Until modern day society, you didn't just run, right? Maybe if you're in an agriculture society, you, you had a farm all day. You're squatting, you're lunging, you're lifting, you're going, right? Jim Ryan, he was a farmer, had that farmer boy strength. Ran 355 mile in high school on a cinder track. World record holder at age 19, 351 on a cinder track without these super shoes. That was farm boy strength. And then before that, you might have just been a soldier and you're running through the woods, you're lifting, you're jumping, you're crawling. The body was designed to work in multiple planes of motion. It was work to, mul to, to work over multiple exercises. Yes, maybe a specific body type is better suited for a specific exercise, but I believe that you need to work on your total overall human capacity and capabilities, and that's going to translate well to whatever your chosen sport is. I believe that athleticism is the base for everybody, no matter what your chosen sport is, and then you build your sport-specific skill set on top of that base of athleticism from everything I've seen everything I've experienced personally with coaching I just believe that's the best way of of going about it so that's why I do jiu-jitsu we did three five-minute rolling rounds after working on some knee slide passes everyone's way bigger than me what I learned and this is the other thing is I love jiu-jitsu because in running 
self-inflicted pain. Self-inflicted. Which means you can decide when to push or when to push off the pedal. Jiu-jitsu, someone else is inflicting pain onto you. Maybe pain is not the best word, but someone is grappling with you. And you have to hold them off or you have to fight back. And so it's different in that in that sense as well, right? And so what I learned, be a little bit more patient, learning to leverage my body, use my energy in a different way, learn how to maybe hold a position rather than it than advance. Um, survived a really good choke for a long time, was able to stay calm, control my breathing, get out of it. And so that's another thing. In ultra running, you don't want to have really high highs, really low lows. You want to stay as even keeled as possible. And jiu-jitsu is really good at teaching that because it's, okay, I'm in this tough position. They have limbs around my neck. They've taken my legs out of it. All I have is my hands and my ability to stay calm, right? So you stay even keeled, teases you to discipline your mind and to capture your thoughts and stay controlled. So I won't really go uh, too big into that. Wednesday, what did I do? Six miles, six seven fifteen, cutting down as the body warmed up. I was just flat. I felt so flat Wednesday. And so Monday night, right, waking up 4 a.m., getting in the training, stayed up till about 9 p.m. I'm done with work and school of ministry. Tuesday, same thing, up again, 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m., go all the way till 9 p.m., um, just doing management consulting work, trying to get this business off the ground here in Phoenix. Everything's going really well, but just long hours. Same thing on Wednesday, right? So I had three days in a row where I was just going from about 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. till 9 p.m. So by Wednesday, I was just exhausted, felt flat. I thought I might be able to warm up after the drills, but during the, halfway through the mile of hill drills, I was just like, man, I got, I got nothing. And I kind of sat there on a rock, and I was like, oh, my God gosh take me home so yeah i got a mile in at 657 didn't want to push it oh uh, let's see here let's go back to the strava take a little look i just kind of kept my heart rate even low right on on monday that 622 mile was about 151 heart rate which is like high zone two on wednesday and you can even see i said it's no one day it's no one workout it's the sum Running is compound interest, and that is true. Don't leave your race in training. Don't leave it on the roads. Don't leave it on the trails. Save it for the race, and I've made that mistake the hard way lots of times. But, yeah, right, heart rate 145. I just didn't – had no squeeze. I was like, I don't want to do nothing. Just get me home. Anyway, so, yeah, that was that. Staying consistent. Mind was in a good spot. Spirit was in a good spot. Physically just wasn't there. Once again – Wednesday, had some food, did some breath work, felt pretty decent for the afternoon weights, warmed up with lunge series, so forward lunge, side lunge, backwards lunge, heard a walkover drill, so if you Google Alan Webb or Lionel Manzano, maybe you can find their hurdle walkover series, and, the, and Shannon Roberry as well, they're really known for, for and then also um, Jay Johnson, they're known for that hurdle walkover series. Great athletes, great coaches. So hurdle walkovers, they would do these for about an hour to give you some um, perspective of how much pro athletes do drills and strength training. They would do a hurdle series for like an hour multiple times a week, and that's just one drill, right? Hurdle walkover series. Um, band walks, that was my warm-up. And then CrossFit gym, I love it. They have two giant fans, but I was just working out in the corner trying to respect everyone else because I don't do CrossFit really, but I train at a CrossFit gym because it's a Christian CrossFit gym, and I'm trying to help them grow membership. I love CrossFit. I just do a lot more specific run-specific training, and now I'm doing high rocks, but I'll do heavy squats. I'll do um, deadlifts and stuff. I'm not really into snatches or cleans over my head uh, power snatches i'm into cleans i'm not into power snatches over my head or anything because i was just training a super hot corner let's just put it that way that's kind of the theme of where i'm going i was sweating but hey those heat shock proteins hgh working out on a sauna pretty much so yeah i did the ski rig again um not 200 meters it was 500 meters again so um high rocks is a thousand 
Got my good form. I was at a resistance 9, 154, first round, but 201, gassed out that second round. Step ups on a 20 inch box. So, again, working on single leg balance, single leg strength, flexion at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Did some chest press, just working on those pec muscles, working on that back muscles. Single arm rows. So, right when you're running, those arms act as pendulums going forward and back. Heavy single arm rows, super functional, helps with that rip back. If you can get that rip back, you're going to get more oblique rotation, so more muscle recruitment there also going to get more lat recruitment and your lats work with your glutes to to stabilize but also to generate propulsion so you want good efficient pendulum arm swings you don't want to be losing tension or energy in that arm swing right you want to be able to learn to run with the other half of your body not just your legs let's run with our core let's run with our arms shoot we run with our neck with our head we doing whatever it takes to squeeze out every last drip of performance from our body right uh did lunges with the sandbag again did some farmers carries with 50 pound dumbbells that was a lot easier than kettlebells just because of how the weight is distributed but i will need to get used to having that weight more of it underneath rather than evenly distributed to the sides because that's how high rocks is but felt good good grip did some russian twist getting the obliques going and then I did reverse sit-ups where you kind of you lay on your back and then you put your um, – so let's say it's like this. And then you put your feet over your uh, head and then you bring it back like that. So feet over your head, bring it back like that. Good range of motion through the low back, through the spine. Also for, for jiu-jitsu, it's good defense. Um, all in all, like I said, felt solid. I made this other tab as well right so i have the exercise element start tracking it over time so my ring assisted single leg squat uh side lunge overhead rotation cable rotation ski rig so i can start to track my progress over time then just being like more free willy about everything to be honest the last few years try not to like think about stuff too much but i decided like i'm just doing so i'm doing so much i got trying to launch a couple businesses uh, got a lot of ministry stuff going on. We're doing this YouTube channel, training for Ultra. You just need to be a little bit more methodical. One, for a performance standpoint. Two, I got the skill set to be methodical. I got the energy. I got the time. I got the willpower. Three, to add more value to y'all, right? Just kind of see. Uh, we can look back at this, modify. You can use this template as well. Um, and just kind of track your progress, get those results. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was Wednesday. Thursday, man, I was so freaking tired. Woke up early, went for a walk, did some jiu-jitsu, worked on full mount to arm ball, full mount to triangle, four rounds of rolling, three minutes each, more flow than, and feel rather than force. So, Thursday, I did a really good job. Tuesday, I was humbled. I was like, man, like, I just, this, I'm just getting rocked. I'm, I'm being impatient. I'm trying to force things. I'm using instincts. I don't really understand what's going on. So then I was using good body position, good leverage, and I was able to hold down people 40, 50 pounds heavier than me. They wasn't wasn't able to get me off of them. So that's good progress. In the PM, man, I was so tired. And so I just did some journaling and some sleep. Friday, 6.45, did not want to go to jiu-jitsu, but went to jiu-jitsu, did what I had to do. PM, Friday, foam rolled, stretched for 50 minutes, um, had beef fajitas for dinner, and then I fell asleep before 7 p.m. So I'm grateful that my work allows me to to do that. I know not everybody has that luxury, so I don't I don't take it for granted. I'm very grateful that I was able to go to bed by, by 7 p.m. Woke up early Saturday, got in 16 miles, 654, felt good, 92 plus degrees at the finish. Um, ran with my Camelback, two liters of water, had 30 ounces in this beautiful Gatorade bottle right here with some salt and everything. Felt pretty good through 10 miles, but the heat just starts to take its toll. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at that real quick. Best run, considering how tired I was the whole week, very pleased with the with the run on Saturday. So again, started off, it was pretty hot. Um, you can see even on Strava says about 90 degrees. Heart rate, I was in that zone too, pretty good, 149. 
for the average. Cadence wasn't that wasn't that bad. One seventy six to one eighty is gonna be pretty good. Um, started off, you know, and form felt good. I feel my body starting to get back in balance. Hips aren't getting back in place because symmetry is good. Push off on the right and left side. Started bringing it down. And then, to be honest, after 10, I was like, man, the heat just zapped me. I was like, I want to get done. So, But I was like, I don't want to start pushing too early. It's kind of hot. So kind of got impatient. And then after 12, I was like, I know I can hold it for four. Let's start gradually bringing it down. So 640, 636, 638, a little bit of squeeze, 617 for that last mile. So felt in control, had one in the chamber. Was able to come back home, shower, get a little smoothie, and go on with the with the rest of my day. So 16 miles, good run, over 25% of the Black Canyon distance. Even though this was on a road, though, I think with the heat and everything else that's going on, this is a great place to be with um, eight weeks out from the 55-kilometer race in Flagstaff, six, six and a half months out from the race. I'm really, really grateful for this, especially considering, you know, 2019 was one of my peak years of fitness. 2020, I was in really good shape. 2021, I was still in really, really good shape, but it was starting to fall off a little bit in terms of strength, but I was in good shape. And then uh, 2022, you know, things started to start to gradually get stressful. I was in decent shape. Uh, right. I, you can even check my Strava, but I, w- I ran like 20 miles, 22 miles at a 553 pace towards the end of 2022. So not my strongest, but still relatively really good. Lots to be grateful for. Then 2023, man, life took its toll and I barely trained for a whole year. I couldn't really run. Body was locked up. Mind was locked up. Spirit was locked up. I just did a lot of hiking, a lot of prayer. And a lot of stretching. And so to come back now, halfway through 2024, body, mind, soul, spirit, feeling good. I'm just grateful, to be honest with you. Because uh, I don't know. A part of me was like, man, is it done? Like, is it over? And so to come back now and to be in this good spot, able to run 16 miles in 90 degree heat, you know, with, with some good miles at the end. I feel grateful, and uh, I want to speak positivity into the world. I want to speak love into the world. So thank you for following. Thank you for following along. It was a good run. Um, Sunday, so that's this morning. I did 25 miles easy on the bike. Really good stuff. Just continue to build up that cardiovascular endurance. And tonight, I'll do some more uh, prayer. I'll do some more journaling. I'll do some more reading and everything and so the themes for this next week i'll continue on because the 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 following week i'm leading a men's retreat up in the mountain so i'm, I'm gonna be a leader at a men's retreat so there's not gonna be a really good opportunity to maybe set aside two two hours for a saturday run so i'm gonna have to modify so this week i'm gonna build again i'm actually going to go up to flagstaff so go up to some cooler temperatures, but go up in altitude and get in about an 18 miler up on A1, one of my favorite roads to run on with my best friends and stuff. And um, but yeah, the theme for this week, let's continue. I'm gonna continue to get in two to three strength sessions with high rock slash running specific, three jujitsu sessions, continue to build up that mileage and uh, running and cross training. So continue to just focus on process. Not the results. The process is the results. The discipline and the lifestyle, that is the results. And the fruit that comes into every aspect of your life as a business leader, as a community leader, as a church leader, as, as a spouse, as a significant other, as a, as a, as a child of your parents, as a, as a sibling, as a human being, as a decent human being. The process of training for something like this and stretching yourself in this way, that is the real prize. That is the results. It's not some time. It's not some medal. It's not kudos. It's not because someone thinks it's badass to run 62 miles, even though it is in a way, right? And that comes from a healthy place, not from an arrogant place, because I've always been 
really hard on myself thinking that not good enough, nothing I do is good, nothing I do is cool. So that's that's a switch in mindset for me, but it's not the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize is who we become in the process and are we humble? Are we do we have gratitude? Are we kind? Do we have a servant mindset? Do we love on other people? Do we love ourselves? Do we appreciate all the all the goodness that we have in our lives? And I have a lot to be thankful for. The the good training, the healthy body, the healthy mind, the motivation, the support, the 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 the, the, the means to do this, the internet to share it with you guys. Man, I got a lot to be grateful for. And so um, you know what? If you're watching this, I hope you get after it, whatever that goal is. And I hope you take a risk this week. I hope that if there's something you've been putting off, I hope that you get after it because I know you're strong enough and we can do this shit. So um, I'm out. Let's f***ing go.